Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, today um, I prepared for you um, in engineering, graphics, and design the the um, civil. Still, we're still on civil on paper one, and we're going to focus today on, on on symbols. First of all, scales, and then after that, annotations and civil um, symbols specifically. Um, it's very important um, to understand that symbols are the way of communicating. Um, some more detail of of what exactly is, is expected from a from a civil plan, for instance, for let's say for instance a floor plan in this case. Um, we have done one or two of those symbols during um, the previous session where we have done the the site plan, but now predominantly we're going to focus on the on the floor plan symbols. There's a load of symbols, and of course you have to know and you have to understand the symbols. Um, the, the main reason I'm saying that is because of the repetition of symbols. If you, if you should take a look at, for instance, a house, a floor plan specifically, there will be most probably three or four windows in there. Now, making a mistake on the first window and you repeat the mistake, obviously it's, it's costing you a lot of marks in the process. A window will, will earn yourself four half marks, which gives you two marks for, um, of course, full marks. And then if you should, done, should be done with your paper and you should take paper one and paper two and you have to reduce it to a, a mark out of hundreds and hundreds for your year mark, it means if you have to divide it again, it's going to be 1%. So for one window, you can add a percent to your total. And that's the importance of that. Now, of course, it's not only windows, it's doors as well. And from doors, there's also electricity, switches and sockets and lights. Um, roof hanging lights and whatever the case might be. Okay, but as important as the symbols are, um, I will also explain to you um, in first angular geographic projection what it is, what does it mean by first angular geographic projection. Remember that paper one will be always first angular geographic projection and it's important that you understand the, the process of, of what we are um, going through. So the place, placement of views is also important. And then besides that, Scaling is very important as well because every time you draw something, it has to be reduced to a smaller scale or to enlarge to a bigger scale. Now, most of the time, you have to reduce this to a smaller scale. Okay, so what I will do is I will explain the information to you and as we progress, you will see all of these things coming clear at, at, at some stage. All right, so first of all, um, what is first angular geographic projection? There on the, on the screen, you will see, it points out to you um, oh, number one, so that means first, first angle. All right, so you can see the one as an, as an arrow, and then of course the bow, and then you've got the target. All right, but that, that target is made out of paper. So in other words, whatever the, the arrow is doing, it will go right through the, through the target. So if I should explain first angle geographic projection to you, it's like the number one, seen as an arrow, shoots off, and then it goes through the target, and it will be placed on the, the, the other side of, of the target. In other words, that's, if you, that was the front view, the left view will be seen right through towards the other side, which is on the right-hand side. All right, And also the top view, if I look from above, shoot with the, with the arrow right through the target, it will be placed on the bottom. So that's the top view. That's first angle geographic projection. Very important to understand, to know where to place your views. And then also, in first angle geographic projection, paper one, predominantly civil analytical questions, also civil drawings of what I'm going to explain today, and then also solid geometry, interpenetration, transition pieces, and of course, we can um, argue in terms of perspective drawings, that's something total, total, totally different, but yes, that is basically still the case in terms of paper one. All right, then scales. If you go to scales of drawings, remember, a floor plan is by far too big to place onto a piece of paper, an A3 paper of what you're going to work with and so, so therefore we have to scale everything down. But you can't just estimate. This is this is not art, or this is not more or less. This is not. This is a precise subject. That's accurate subject. So therefore, if you take a symbol, for instance, a toilet, or a shower, or a wash basin, if the examiner has done all the travel in showing to you what the size of it is, and you have to draw it on a scale of one to fifty, or one to seventy-five, or whatever the case might be, you have to reduce those same sizes to a smaller size in order to, 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 to draw that. So scales is very important. Now, of course, um, that's what I've said just now is you have to reduce, you have to enlarge, you have to make bigger and smaller. Um, that's known as scaling, and scaling should appear 
to a specific ratio, of course, and then one-to-one -one means that the size of the object is exactly being drawn on the same size of what the, what the um, question is required in the process. Two-to-one means that you make it larger, two times larger, in other words, five-to-one, five times larger, and so you will carry on. And then, of course, if you go to um, one to two, it means you make it smaller, two times smaller, one to five, five times smaller, one to 50, 50 times smaller. So therefore, sometimes if a wasp basin is 450 and you have to divide it by, let's say, for instance, um, 50, it will end up about 10 millimeters All right, so for a wasp basin. So therefore, you have, but you have to stick to that. That's where you're going to get your marks from. All right, so there we go, larger scales, smaller scales, and of course, the same scales. And then also, um, with the scale of 1 to 2 means that all sizes on the drawing shown oh, should be then for therefore divided by 2. And if it's 2 to 1, it will be multiplied by 2. 5 multiplied by 5, 10 multiplied by 10, or divide by 10. Also important, the dimensions should always be the same as what it is in real life. You, even if it's reduced, even if it's enlarged, you still show the real dimension of a drawing. So whatever the question is, um, and you have to reduce it, they ask to show some hidden detail and show some, let's say for instance in this case, um, dimensions. It means that you will show the hidden detail, but also you will show the dimension as it is in that case, in that regard. All right, the ratio can differ. It's 1 to 2, 1 to 5, 1 to 10, 1 to 20, and so on. So we normally work with 2, 5, 10s, 20s, and 50s, and 100s, and so on. But now that's just recommended to work with those scales. You can work with 175, 1 to 75. If you do your pet, for instance, you can work on 1 to 450, for instance, for the site plan or whatever the case might be. Right, just as long as it fits in onto the table, onto your paper, and then, of course, if all the detail has been shown. All right, then, of course, with floor plans. If we get to floor plans, a few things that I want to point out to you. The first one is for a water closet, in other words, a toilet, as we know it. All right, so that's the toilet. On the left hand side, um, the examiner will do its at utmost to show all the curves and show all the detail of the toilet itself. But architects and also we as draftsmen, we will use square symbols in doing that, triangular symbols. All right, so from the front, that is shown to you how the, f how the front view will look like. And also from the top, it's also showing to you how the top view will look like. Now, if the examiner is asking you to draw the front and the top view, remember, first angle geographic projection means that the front view will be on the top, and if you look through your drawing, through your X, Y downwards, this will be the top view. So you can't swap these two drawings around if the examiner is asking you to draw the symbol freehand um, and then put them next to each other or put them one above the other instead of like it is over here, front view and top view on the, onto each other. All right, so that is very important to, to play the placement of those ones as well. All right, so for all symbols. This is for a urinal, wall-mounted urinal. Um, now, that, that is the symbol in the front view. This is the symbol in the top view. I've just drawn in the house so that you can see it's some significant distance away from the floor. You can't be put those things on the floor, of course. And then also it's against the wall. You can see over here on the top view, it's placed against the wall. And the same with the previous one. The toilet is standing on the, on the floor and it's against the wall. There's the, the, the water the basin itself that you can see there where the water will, the tank where the water will run in. And this square on the bottom is actually the, the seat, All right? In a rectangle with a single line over there. This is a square with a triangle upside down standing on the sharp end over there for indicating the sharp end of the toilet. All right, so there we go with a symbol of the urinal. Um, this is a wall-mounted a slab stall urinal, if you see it that way. This is where um, it will be placed against the, the front view over here on the floor. Um, it has got a little step over here, although it's on the same level. It, sometimes they show the step over there. And then against the wall, it will be basically like um, 45 degree zigzags that you go over there. And then, of course, the outlet. Why is the outlet shown? Simply because of the fact that the, the builder needs to know where to put the plumbing and where does the water will run out on the left or on the right hand side, outside to the rest of the building itself or to the rest of the sewage line. This is a bidet. Now, for the bidet, there's two different types. I'm not going to go through the detail, water from bottom, water from the top. And this is the, the, the way you're going to show that. You can see the bottom part over there where it's been placed some distance away from the floor, of course. It's a square and a rectangle, which is basically wider than the square. And seen from above, 
it's two rec angles with the downpipe. So again, the, the, the um, plumber needs to know where to put the piping for, 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 for the, the bidet that runs out there. All right. And you should also know that there's sometimes hot water and cold water, sometimes only cold water involved. So therefore, there should be a tap. So he has to cut out the taps and do the copper piping and uh, those type of things and the plumbing for the, for the water going into the bidet and then also for the plumbing going out of the bidet itself. All right, so that is the reason why you put the plugs in and the holes and so on. All right, this is now for a sink. Um, for a single sink itself, you can see, again, it has got lots of detail. You can see the lines, you can see the curves and all those type of things. None of that needs to be shown. And then so many times, learners go and make from that point over there where you put the the um, the flat area over there, you you will basically don't show any lines over there. It's just a rectangle, a rectangle inside, and then a circle. From above, from the front view itself, um, this will be seen as the level where this, the the cabinets will be. All right. So again, um, if the examiner is saying to you this is 65 or 75, you have to by calculation work out what's the height from the floor up to that point. For that moment, again, scaling comes in. And if the examiner is showing to you that this distance from there to there is, let's say, for instance, a thousand millimeters, you have to calculate what the distance is from there to there. You can't make this larger. You can't make the width of it larger in the top view. You have to stick to the dimensions of what the examiner. Now, that is significantly small. I know that. But the, 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 the most important part of it is um, show the double lines for the sink on the top. And then on the bottom over here, there's where the basin is of the sink itself. So it's on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. So if the builder needs to put it in, he should know to the, to the wall side, you don't want any water or something like that splashing against the wall. The wall. So therefore, you have to place the sink on the left-hand side. So that detail will also be covered. But yes, um, in the exam paper, just as long as you do the symbol correctly, it's, it's very important. All right, so this is for a double sink. Um, again, you can see the lines, you can see the detail of curves and all those type of things and so on. Rectangle, two rectangles with two round pipes going out there. And then, of course, this part over here should link with the length of it. And if the length is now, in this case, 1,400 or 1,200, it means by calculation you have to, on the scale of 50, you have to divide those into, into that. All right, so that is basically for the sinks. Um, this will earn you four or at least four or five marks even. So therefore, if you don't know how to draw the, the, the symbols itself, you're going to pick yourself problems in the process. All right, so then the next I want to point out to you is the bath. Um, make sure that the plug of the bath normally runs out closer towards the wall. All right, so over here it runs out to this wall maybe, or it can go out there. So the main thing is basically you have to show where it runs out in that case over there. And then, of course, this is the site where you normally will sit. The taps will be on this side over here. So therefore, that side over there where the plug is not, it's going to be slanted at 60 degrees. All right, so that is basically. And again, the dimensions of what the examiner is giving you, that should be the dimensions using for the height or for whatever. I will show you some more images just now. Okay, now the wasp basin, many of the learners make mistakes over here. In terms of the wasp basin, normally the examiner shows you the footage of the wasp basin. All right. That doesn't mean that you have to put it in over here. All right, so in that case, you have to show the distance and then from there on the rectangle on top of that. And then as seen from above, this is again the rectangle with the circle. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, the, the, the emphasis is on the correct symbols. If it's a rectangle, you keep it as a rectangle. If it's a square, you keep it square. This is for a wash trough. You get some of those made out of concrete. You get some of those made out of stainless steel. Again, it's like the previous a wasp basin that you see over there. The only difference is this is slanted, so therefore you can show some, some distance over here. There's a lot of lines. No lines should be shown over here on the bottom. All right, so nothing of that. It's just what needs to be placed in here. Putting the wrong symbol in the, say, for instance, garage, it, it means that they will put a wasp basin in there or something else in there instead of having a trough in, in, the, in, the, in the garage itself. Now, again, with showers, you can see over here, and most of the times, uh, a shower will have the coverage of glass on the sides over here. That is detail, not for the for the for the builder. The builder needs to know where is the plug, where do I go out with the plumbing. In that case, where is the plug, and where do I go out? And over here, seen from above, 
And again, the examiner will give you lots of lines over here saying the water is running all the way down to the plug and so on. No lines shown over here. This is a square or this one is a rectangle, of course, with a circle. Um, it doesn't really matter where you put the circle, just as long as you put it close to the wall so it will run out easy outwards and you don't have too much plumbing underneath concrete and so on. Okay, these are built-in cabinets. Often they ask for you for a built-in cabinet, which is just across from corner to corner where it will fit in. This over here is a stove, just for orientation. Most of the time they don't really ask a stove, although they can. Um, that is the symbol for the stove and also for the fridge over here. That's the fridge where you can see the door on this side over here. Actually, no front view or section view for a fridge and a stove, so it's just you keep it out. It's just for the for the floor plan. Then for ra rainwater downpipes, all right, in Afrikaans, rainwater afvoerpijpe, all right, RWAP, all right, so this is what you can create in Afrikaans. In English, it will be rainwater downpipes. So in other words, that rainwater downpipes will run down from that point it's specifically. So that's where it points out on the outside of the house, of course. All right, so that is important to, to put in, especially if you've got a section line over here. If the section line runs through this part and it's pointing into that direction, to the right, in other words, there's no rainwater downpipes. Don't waste time in doing rainwater downpipes if you look at it this way and there's no rainwater there. But if you have to do the section to the left, in other words, the arrows are pointing to the left, it means that the rainwater downpipe will be visible. If there's a toilet over here, the toilet on the inside will be visible. So you have to show all the detail. All right, so make sure, don't waste time in putting something there which is not there for the section. But I will, I will explain that to you when we get to section drawings. All right, now this is for storm water. Remember, this is now for a center line. It's only one single short line in, inside there. This for storm water has got two dots. In other words, two dashes and then a long dash. So the, these are the gullies and the rainwater will run down into this area and so on and so on. All right, so that's basically the storm water that you see. Um, and then a, a gully, a stormwater drain, which is basically look like this one over here with a grid on top. It's just a square in, uh, inside with another square. This is for a grease trap, right? It, it was, it has been asked in previous exam papers, for, show in um, freehand the symbol for a grease trap. Now, of course, that is what you have to draw. draw. It was, I think, if I'm not mistaken, 2018 it was asked. But anyway, this is normally asked in a... In, in paper one, question number one, where the site plan is. And then they ask you something like a, a freehand sketch of, of, of that. So therefore, again, symbols is counting a lot of marks. This is a gully in South African terms. We know gullies more or less like this one over here, where it's a half a circle, and then from there on flat against the wall. European concepts is like this one over here. But yes, it's a square and the square inside the square. That is for, for, for uh, running water on the outside, shower water, for, from the kitchen or whatever the case might be, it doesn't matter. The fact is water from inside the house going outwards and then it runs into the gully and from the gully it's all collecting the toilet. Water of course doesn't run in here, you, you have to cover it, but the shower and the bath and the wasp basin water will run all to the gully and from the gully it will run down to the sewage pipes. Okay, over here, this is where it links up with sewage lines, sewage pipes itself. Remember, we will have an inspection eye over there. We will have a rotting eye at the end of the system. This is your rotting eye. I've explained that with the previous session where you rot, where you clean this drain from a straight line at the end of it. All right, and then from there on, this links up with that part. That is the area where that you will have your inspection eye. This is where these two join up with each other. Um, that is 110... Um, PVC piping that you use, you, you will usually use there. Okay, and then from there on over here, this is your ramp, the ramp that runs up that there. It points out to you the arrow saying to you, um, that ramp is basically going upwards into this direction. The, the angle of which it, which it is, it means for every 10 meters, I will rise one meter. So this is what it points out to you. For 10 meters, it will rise one meter in terms of that. All right, and then also for a staircase, also the arrow is pointing upwards. So it goes up to that direction. Um, then over here, um, if I can recall your memory on the previous session where we have explained to you the watt, electrical watt meter outside the plot, where the municipality will take the, the, the electricity meters from. Um, and then from there on, that was a square with a W inside. In this case over here, we still have dealing with a W, in this case two W's for, you can say it for yourself, warm water, but it's actually called hot water according to the civil symbol 
of sands. So it's two W's with a circle. Now, of course, it makes sense because the geyser normally is round. So therefore, that is round. And then what, uh, warm water on the, on the outside. All right. So make sure that the, the, the examiner is going all more and more into this route where he's asking other symbols not normally asked. He asked two years ago the watt meter. He asked, I think, last year, if I'm not mistaken, for either a water tank or a um, warm water system. Now this is for a water tank. You can also see the footage on where the tanks are standing on. Normally we will make that out of concrete, but there you can see it's a square being casted here and then the tanks placed on top. So therefore it's a rect angle. Again, no fuzz with the, with the tanks, how the tanks look like and all those type of things. This is wet concrete work that the builder needs to know of and he must make aware of it. You have to cast a square base and then water will be there. So therefore that is for the water tanks that's placed in there. All right, so you've got the, the symbol of a, a W inside a square. You've got a symbol of a W in a, uh, outside on a red angle and then two W's with a circle. Those are the symbols for water tanks, for geysers and for watt meters. This is for a water meter itself. This is the symbol for the meter. In other words, that is where you will meter your water usage and then of course the municipality will charge you on the meters, um, previous reading and, and, and the new reading. Right. If it gets to electrical symbols, we will get to exam papers just now, but if we get to electrical symbols, I need to explain to you um, the different types of symbols that we do have. Right. So there's a few general information. Uh, it's distribution symbol keys showing the following. It's showing the ceiling mounted lights. It's showing the waterproof wall mounted lights, of course, and then also the plugs, the geyser points. It points out to you the stove, the distribution box. I will explain that all to you just now. All right, on the floor plan, uh, the position of the following components must be shown. Of course, the main board, uh, the distribution board, of course, the lights, and then also the plugs and also the switches. All right, so those are the things that you will get. Now, if you get to the distribution board, um, it points out to you trip switches, it, earth leakages and timers and electrical meters and those type of things and so on. So here we go with the d distribution board. This is what it looks like. You're all familiar with the distribution board, but it's a rect angle against the wall and it says DB, distribution board, in Afrikaans, distribution board. So it's also going to be DB. All right, then over here, this is your earth leakage, um, what it will look like. Then you can um, have the earth leakage either sometimes outside. It's also sometimes part of the board itself inside uh, the distribution board. Then this is a very important um, image that you have to take care of. In the exam paper, the examiner will say to you N, like number, and then multiply by 60 watt. In other words, he wants you to know, listen here, this symbol is not N times 60, but the number he's requiring for how many bulbs or how many tubes should be in there for the, for the um, fluorescent light. So in that case, it means, in this case, there's two fluorescent bulbs or tubes inside here, and each one is basically then showing to you 60 watts in the process. All right, over here, you've got a wall hanging ceiling, so it's just a cross, just the X, and then from there on, if you've got three of those, it will be three of those 40 watts wall mounted. You're not, not gonna show three crosses over here. It's just simply that the, 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 the electrician should know, electricity should go to this point. The fancy, the cosmetics, the nice of it, will be by the client itself but he's got an electricity point at that specific point in the, And according to the, to, the, to the owner, he's asking for three of those hanging from the top, maybe at the staircase or something like that. All right, so this is a wall mounted. From a wall mounted, that line is very important. You have to show the line. It should be there at all times. Um, so you can't do actually with that line, otherwise the symbol will be wrong. You're gonna get half a mark for the symbol, but if, there's, if that's not a line over there, and that line should be significantly um, drawn away from the wall itself so that you show the examiner I'm competent enough I know exactly that that line is wall mounted it has got a footage to to attach to the wall itself all right then you got your one-way switch as you get or as you enter the, the, the building it's just the one single switch so from the year on normally we will do the wiring from the center or from close to the circle itself but yes you do the wiring from there further to the light itself this is now just a switch if you got two of those in other words, two of those um, switches, it will have two tail parts over here. 
And of course, if you go to three, it will have three tail parts over there. So this means that this light, this switch itself, will serve one light, say, say for instance, outside, one in the one um, area of the room, of the building itself, and one to the other area of the room. But all of them will be switched on individually. It's not in series where you will put on two or three or four lights with one switch. These are three different switches of which you can manipulate or which you can use. This is a two-way switch, not often asked in the exam, I, I doubt that it was ever asked, but this is where you get into a, a passage on the one side and you don't want to walk in the dark to the other side, switching it off and then walk in the dark to the other side. You can walk to the inside of the passage and put it off again, so therefore you will have another light switch on the other side of the passage, some significant distance away from each other, and then of course you've got the lights over here. So it doesn't matter which door you're using, you can put it on and put it off on either side of what you will have. All right, so that is basically two tails, one on the one side, one on the other side. Then over here, you've got a dimmer switch, also not very often asked in the, in the, in the exam papers, but please be familiar. That can be, or that might be a short question for maybe for paper, paper one um, site plan. Now, how do I do the wiring? Of course, this is a complex like system. Um, if we should draw draw that on a table itself, on a on a on a um, display, but in architectural terms, it's basically the switch on this side over here. I've got the the roof hanging light, the ceiling hanging light over there, and I need to join those two with each other. Of course, then I will draw the line freehand center towards the center of the circle over here. It must be a full circle. And for switch outlet sockets, like in this case over here, you will see it's half a circle. All right, so you can't mix those two with each other. This one is a switch for the light, and the socket itself is basically pointing out to you half a circle. And then, of course, this is the lead that will run out, and this one over here is the manipulation of the lead, putting it on, putting it off. In other words, those are the switches on what you will get. All right, now it doesn't matter what the detail is on this side over here. That's not the issue. That you can sort out. If you built your house with the electrician, you just tell him, listen, yeah, I want electricity there. And the electricity should be a socket like this one over here where I can put it on and off. All right. But sometimes it does happen that you do have, for instance, um, cables that you have to plug in, also shavers and those type of things and so on, where you don't have a switch. It's basically a safe like plug that you can use in that case. So there's no switches. You can't put this on and put, put it off later on. There's always electricity running out or maybe cabling or something like that. So therefore the cabling should also be half a circle and just like a cable port that you can get on that specific point. All right, remember this one of the previous um, explanation. This is your watt meter. Again, that's another W that we have been spoken about. All right, so make sure that you know where it is. Normally this will be on site plans. Then over here you've got an emergency light. It's true. It's like an hourglass filled with sand completely. Um, this is what your emergency light will look like and so on. Also not quite often asked in, in exams and so on. This is your internet or internal telephone cable or the, 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 the telephone itself, the monitor. If you want to talk to someone at the gate or something like that, then you he will pick it up, you will pick it up and you talk to him. This one is indoors. In other words, it's not colored in. Outdoors, like this one over here on the outside, you can see, is basically colored in in the process. All right, so again, the position of it is important. Onto the wall, onto the pillar, whatever the case might be, you have to show that. All right, so now this is the electricity. This is a simple plan, a floor plan in other words. Remember, we're busy with symbols. Um, and then with the symbols, this is basically what it's been asking you. Quickly have a look over here. There you go with a two-way switch. You switch this one on. It runs through the light. Tonight, if you go to bed, um, to your room or whatever the case might be, you want to put it off over here. You don't want to put it off there and fall over all the furniture to get to the door itself. So this is the two-way switch. Now, this one over here, this switch that you see over here is just a single pole. It will run from the center outwards to a wall-mounted light over there. This one inside this building over here just runs to, towards that point over there. And there you go with a socket over there. That's your distribution board and that's your earth leakage. All right, so those are all the symbols that you can see how it will fit in, how it will look like and so on. So that one is basically the wall mounted. There you go with a switch over here. This is your, your fluorescent lights that you see. You can see there's three of those. Remember the exam is saying N, the number. What is the number required? That is roof hanging. 
hanging from the ceiling. This is your, although two or three or whatever, how many plugs that you do have got there, the symbol stays the same. Single outlet, single switch that you can get over there. And then that, of course, is um, the earth leakage and the distribution board that you see in that case. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, that is basically, let's quickly go to some possible exam papers I can show you in terms of this. And let's orientate ourselves and how exactly the examiner is giving it to you. Now this is, will be question four. This is your question, this is your answer sheet. All right, so on this, on these two, you have to see the significance over here. This is the room designation. All right, so if you zoom in on this part over here, if you, if you, if you see that part, that is exactly the same as what the floor plan is, what the examiner gave you. So if you go further downwards, there you can see this part over here, the stove, the sort of um, area where you can sit for maybe lunch or breakfast or whatever the case might be. There's a, there's a fridge seems to be, and then the rooms are basically the same in display as what it is in the question paper over there. All right, so that part over there is important. Now, of course, you can read through all the question and all those type of things and so on. Um, that can take time, but just remember that the outlay is most of the time, 90% of the time, it's on the same way it's been done over here. Although it looks uh, very confusing with all the information all over the, uh, the, the paper itself, it will normally be in the same sequence in, and on the same places, just to save some time over there. Now, of course, if you read through the question, you have to know exactly what is asked and what is important, what is the examiner is looking for. All right, now we're going to focus on the floor plan. That first part, it just points out to you, it's showing the rainwater, it's showing the table of roof trusses and information of roof notes and so on. It's showing you the electricity tables, it's showing you a table of room designation. So that's the first part of what it says, basically, this is what I'm giving you. The second part is the instruction. In other words, that is the part of where you have to be instructed on how exactly what is asked in this case over here. So in this case, it's asking you to, to, to complete the floor plan on a scale of 1 to 50. Now, the moment you see 1 to 50, you should grab your exam, uh, your calculator. Of course, you can't use your cell phone in, in, in exam room, so therefore you have to remember your calculator to place it in. And then if this window, window number 1, is a 1,000 millimeters, if I have to place window number 1, at a certain spot over here, there on that side over there. I need to know that that will be the position of window number one. If I go to my floor plan going downwards, it means that I have to place window number one in that case over there. All right, so, but we have done symbols. We haven't done the floor plans yet. The floor plan is the next session. So I'm gonna focus on the symbols of what the examiner is showing you. Um, in that case, there are a few symbols. You can see this electric, electric, uh, electrical symbols, electricity, is basically um, a socket with no manipulation of a switch itself. There's one with a switch. You should know these things. All right, that is a dimmer switch. It's shown to you, but they don't ask a dimmer switch. So therefore, you're not, you're going to ignore that one. This is a two-way switch. If it's not asked, ignore it. It's just there to say, say to you, this is the complete type of symbols that you can get for electricity. I want to focus on this part over here. Can you see it says N of 40 Watt? So the number you have to fill in, all right? So you have to understand where the number comes in. All right, so if I go to the electricity in that way, it points out to you fluorescent lights over here, two of 40 Watt. So you're gonna put in two over there, not the N, because then you're not gonna get the mark for, for, for that. That is a number three. So if I go to my layout, it means that this is number three, so I will put a fluorescent light in this room over here with the symbol saying to you, this is the symbol, but the 2 of 40 watts, not the N of 40 watts, I will place on the bottom. I will show you some, some examples just now as we, we finish with that. Okay, and then it points out to you, um, besides that, it also points out to you that over here, the electricity fittings, one, all the number ones, will be one-way switches. Now, you should know the symbol of a one-way switch, which is that one over there. So I'm going to put a one-way switch over there. I'm going to put a one-way switch on that point. There's only place for two of those. All right, all the number twos are one-way switch with a double pole. In other words, I will have two of those, of those flags over there or two of those tail parts over there for, the, for, the, for that. So that is number two. So all the number twos, this is a number two. So therefore, I will place that symbol over there. 
and then also I've got one over here. One runs out to the outside and that was going into the inside of the, of the, of the room itself. All right, three is fluorescent light, so we saw the number three. There's another number three over there. So we're going to add two fluorescent lights. Now imagine for yourself making a mistake by writing N multiplied by 40, losing two half a marks, losing a full mark, half a percent that you will lose because of the fact that you don't know what the symbol is for that. Ceiling, for the ceiling lights, it's a number four. So therefore there's a cross, there's a cross, there's a cross going to be. All right, five is wall mounted, cross with the line over there. Six switches with the socket outlets. There's a six, uh, there's a six, there's a number six. So there's three of those that you have to place in as well. There's also one, there's four, one, two, three, four of, of those sockets. So again, missing out on the number six, missing out on not knowing how the socket look like. Which one is it now? Is it one with the, with the manipulation of the, the switch or the one that looks clear? Making a mistake on that tells you four of those being wrong. So therefore divide by two, divide by two gives you 1% just by not drawing it in on the correct place. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, that is what you will see in terms of symbols I want to show you today. In terms of um, the electric electrical symbols and then also in terms of the, 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 the fixtures, which is this one over here. And then again, I want to f show you all the detail over here. You can see this view, the top view of the sink has got curves in. It shows you the plug, it's fine, but two double lines on the plug itself. It shows you all the fancy lines running down there. You're not going to draw all of those in. You're going to make a rectangle inside a rectangle, and then of course, you're just going to draw the circle without any lines over there. The height of it has also been shown to you, the width of it, the length of it, all those type of things has been shown. So by calculation, remember the question over here, the floor plan's asking for a scale of 1 to 50. So in that case means that if you go to the dimensioning of this specific sink itself, 730 divided by 50 will give you the distance where it is, let's say for instance, 3 millimeters, 7 millimeters, or whatever the case might be for all these dimensions. But do it as small as what the examiner is asking. Here's the shower. Again, there's nothing on top, although there's glass sometimes on top or whatever the case might be. Nothing shown. It's just like a concrete block on the bottom where you will climb on. And then for the shower itself, it's showing to you double lines and all the fancy lines going to the plug and so on. So leave out those lines. You know the symbol. We have done the symbols for that. The toilets, all the curves with the toilets are shown. For the wasp basin, again, it shows you a funny-like bottom tail part where the piping is going out. None of that is necessary. It's a rectangle with a rectangle with a, with a circle inside there. All right, so that is very important that you have to show. Now, I'm going to show you um, the memorandum. I will show you the section plan later on with, an, with the other session. I will show you the de roof detail at another time. Over here, I've shown to you the, um, the windows. I will show, uh, do that on the next session for the windows and also for the, for the doors itself. This is not for this session now. And then I will also show you um, the, the, the roof hanging lights, the switches and the sockets and all those type of things and so on. So, um, and then of course, this is for your elevation view. I will explain that later to you. This is your room designation. This is for the next session when I'm doing the floor plans itself. And these are also some parts of roof detail for the barge board and also for the fascia board and those type of things. All right, but for now, for this session, um, ladies and gentlemen, focusing on the fixtures, and focusing on electricity. All right, so this is what the examiner is giving you. You should then, in this case, work out exactly um, according to what the examiner is saying to you, where the room designations are, where the plugs and those type of things and so on. You're going to put those things in your paper. So this is what the examiner is giving you. You can get full marks for this question. Now, if you total this one, it's 42 percent. Oh, sorry, 42 marks divided by two gives you, of course, um, 21. And then divide by two again gives you about 10.5%. Um, so you can add 10% to your total just by doing this exactly according to the symbols. Now if I go to the memorandums, I can show you the memorandum of this, of this part over here. There we go with the memorandum. Now if you should take a look at this, the first part the examiner is pointing out to you by the floor plan is the doors and windows. Now that I will do with the next, next session. Um, that is 14 marks. All right, so um, I, will, I will talk to you about that just now in the next session. The electricity is 11 marks. Now, quickly have a look at the electricity. It's all the blue dots that you see over here. Now, if I should have a look on this one on the bottom, there's my 
hanging roof hanging light remember that comes from the numbers that was that was given to me from 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 this question over there so it comes from this part of the question so this is where you can get your 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 marks from so in this case this is pointing out to you the um, the, the wall mounted light the electricity I just want to stop for one moment and just indicate to you over here it points out to you arrows pointing to you from number two there's an arrow from number four to number two from number four to number from three to the number one and so on those are the electricity please don't use those straight arrows and arrows on the end it must be just a simple clean line that you see over here freehand being drawn from the light towards the switch from the light towards the switch over here there we go with a single switch over here that is a double switch single switch going through that part towards can you see over here it points out to you 2 multiplied by 40 watts there's also another fluorescent light over here 2 fluorescent lights 2 tubes multiplied by 40 watts so therefore although there's two, only one line over there that is the symbol and this is the number it's requiring so therefore don't write the N just simply write the, the, the total amount there okay and then these are the sockets that you can see there was four of them one there's the other one two there's the other one three and the fourth one was over there and then of course we have got uh, two switches over here one's running to this room the other one's running to the bathroom um, and that is basically what you can see about those symbols all right the next I want to point out to you is the fixtures now that was eight marks in total all right so that's 16 half a marks now that these are the red marks you can see the sink Again, if I can recall you, if I can remind you about what the examiner was asking you, he was asking you to put the sink um, at a specific point, to put the washing closet, water closet at a specific point, the, sh the shower at a, sp uh, a specific point. So those are pointed out to you. If you go to the memo, of course, you have to show exactly where the, where the uh, water closet is, where the shower is, where the, and then you get your marks for that. Again, there's no lines over here. You lose the marks if you, of course, put the lines in there. And the shower, the same. The examiner showed to the fancies of that and the cosmetics and the detail. Don't show any lines of those things inside there. Okay, um, that is basically for electricity and also for the, for the fixtures, the symbols itself, I can show you. So what I want to point out to you, of course, is um, please stick to the rules. Um, I, will talk, I will talk to you about in the next session about the room designations and all those type of things and also about the windows. I will talk to you about the, the doors and the symbols of the doors. But now for electricity and the fixtures, that are basically the important parts that you can get. All right, so hatching, detail and labels is for the next session. So ladies and gentlemen, I really thank you for, for listening to, 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 to me um, going through this as part of the marking team at the end of the year for national senior certificate exams um, I can see every time how the learners losing marks and it's so simple they can do it on one stage they can do it 100% correct but they can't apply it on the other areas itself so please make sure that you understand your symbols test yourself make sure grab a uh, uh, there's there are good examples of symbols itself I can show you this one over here um, on the screen maybe now for, 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 for one moment for the last moment over here there are good examples of um, exercises of what you can go through and see through um, going through and say All right listen I need to draw this and then of course drawing those things according to scale um, yes and that is what I want to say to you I thank you for for this session for listening to the session please go study your symbols um, in terms of electricity, study your symbols in terms of fixtures and make sure that you get full marks for this question. Yet you get 40, 42 out of 42 or then the vicinity of 40 out of 40 at least. Um, then of course 20 marks for, for this paper and then of course divide by 2, 10% that you can add just by simply adding the great symbols. I really thank you and I hope that this is motivating you in doing um, good revision on all the symbols that you, that you have to go through. Thank you very much.